want me to come up here. Uh, you know, we should always know why we do what we do. And as a pastor now, uh, I've been out in San Gabriel three years, and uh, and I just celebrated last week my third year anniversary in San Gabriel. And so, uh, I'm humbled by the power of God in my life, and so I was asked to come up here and do an inspirational and not a message. And so I, I, you should know why you do what you do. And so this is why I follow directions, and I ask God to speak to me uh, during my prayer time up here on what it is that, that affected my life. Because as men, we affect other lives. And we, we, uh, we, we reflect who we are to the next person. And I was blessed to come up here. Half of my group is new converts, and they got uh, their first time out here in a men retreat, and so, and the other half have been out here. Uh, uh, but I asked God, what is it that, that is allowing me to, to be where I'm at today? And to, what can I uh, in, inspire you guys to be? Well, you're looking at an imperfect man today. I'm, I'm imperfect, I don't claim to be perfect. Uh, but one thing I have learned is to be surrendered to God. I've learned that uh, my power comes from God alone. And uh, being out there in three years and, and, uh, and, and witnessing, and it was this confirmation over these messages that have been preached today. I really want you men to, you men that stayed, to be faithful to get whatever God has for you this morning to go down with. For me to leave you guys with something to, where the thought is to, to leave, like Pastor Raymond says, leave whatever it is up here that held you back uh, this past year. But I, but I really want to encourage you because you're looking at a man that I was raised as an atheist. I didn't believe in God. I couldn't stand Jesus. I couldn't stand Christian. I, I thought that Christianity was a form of weakness. That if you followed this uh, Jewish God, uh, you are you are a weak person. Your mind was weak. I, I believe that when I was raised, uh, I was raised as a fighter. My dad raised me. I fought amateurly with my brothers. And there's only one thing that I remember how to beat somebody. The only way you can beat somebody is to take them into the deep rounds. If you could take them into the later rounds, if you really want to, uh, what it's called, it's called the science, the sweet science of boxing. And you're taught how to beat your enemy. But, but when you take somebody from that environment and put you in spiritually, you're not taught how to beat a spiritual enemy. And so when you come from a mindset of a, 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 a warped mindset, and then us as men, that you're brought up in pornography, and you're brought up in, in, in all these uh, uh, sexual misconducts in your life, and being around men who will jam a condom, a, a condom up your butt, uh, and that's your so-called friend, and you, you, you see this behavior happening, that's a sick environment. And so when you're introduced to living for Christ, uh, you don't understand how it is to live. Unless you have somebody that cares enough for you, that doesn't look at you like I'm trying to rule over your life, but wants to be a true friend, a true disciple to train you how to live for God, how to not have weak excuses on why you can't be in the house of God. That is what we're lacking today, man. Uh, uh, what I see, at least in my three years, I've seen a lot of weak excuses. I see a lot of uh, people that don't want to be faithful, that don't want to give, that don't want to be a part of a ministry. And, I, and, that, and that, all, that, all that stems back to who we are as men. If it's not our idea, then we don't want no part of it. We want, we want to be the one with a great idea and have everybody support it. But, you, but we got to learn that if you're going to have unity, you got to learn to esteem your brother. The Bible says that we are supposed to esteem others better than ourselves. Amen. To not only lift up and not only care for your own needs, Amen. but the needs of your brothers yeah. too. So that's why in San Gabriel, I thank God for the support that I, I've had. I thank God that, that, I, that I, I don't have to have a pity party. I don't, I don't pound on my pastor's door and say, help me please. I understand that, that God has strengthened me. Because of my unconditional surrender, as a drug addict, I would search for the dope. I would search for meth. I would search for it, no matter if it was raining or if it was whatever condition, I would search for the drug. And that's the way you got to be when you search for your God. you got to be unconditionally surrendered to God. you got to die to yourself. And no matter what somebody says about you, no matter where you come from, some of us have, have taken dope from the water from the street and slammed it into our veins. And this is why what makes us who we are, man. When you die to yourself, you understand that you're not a perfect person. But when you seek the face of your God, when the face of your God is what you seek, my 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 esteeming to you, my uplifting to you is just like Omar Lopez said. You got to ignore what people think about you. You got to ignore uh, what people want to say into your life. You got people that don't serve God and they're half-hearted and they want to say, "Oh, you're a Christian. You want to serve God." You got to understand, my God uh, has made me strong, and my God is my strength. You gotta have the guts inside you to stand up for what is right because whatever broke you, whatever, whenever you were a drug addict or whenever you were a gangbanger or a, a died for my neighborhood, you stood up for what you were. You gotta know who your 
God is. Daniel says that you have to have an excellent spirit inside you. You got to have a backbone and to not be like, we are the husbands. Amen. You, you got to be the priest of your home. You got to rise up and say that it is my God. It says that Daniel says, when the people who know their God, they will do great exploits. You understand that? So, so when we come to this unconditional surrender, what I have seen this in the past three years is this. You got people who know the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, but they won't give a dime to the church. You got a, you got people who know their Bible left and right, but they're flaky in church. They don't show up at church. You say, make me a house of prayer, and you're never in prayer. You, you know what I'm saying? We just say it right now, right? Lord, make me a house. And you're never in prayer. Put a stamp of a food on it. Say it like it is, right? If you're a man, the melody of a man can't take it like it is. Oh, oh, well, I'm feeling sick. And it's just somebody knows. Come on, get off of yourself. Come on, you want some inspiration? Come on, leave that weakness in the mountain and say, like, God, I got a new set of guts inside me. And that the power of the Holy Spirit is going to continue so I can serve inside my church. So I won't have an excuse, uh, but when we are loaded, we will go anywhere. All of a sudden, you take a bank killer, you can't jump the surf. Oh. Come on. That's weak. Come on. Do you want to hear the truth that makes you free? The truth. The truth confronts you for what reality is. Yeah. Tell me what's wrong with me, and I'll expose what's wrong with you, too. We can tell each other everything. You may not like the way I walk. I can tell you what's wrong with you, too. But where does that get us? Is that a brother? Is that unity? No, right? If you want inspirational word, learn to love your brother, man. You know what I'm saying? You see some brothers walk around like, oh, you think you're all that in the bag. I said, well, I don't think that. I know I'm supported by my God. Hallelujah. I love you guys. I say, Lord, that's why I support the men for a meeting like this. I make sure that we have car washes. I make sure we do uh, yard sales. I even, I even uh, pay for some men to get up here because I understand the value is not in me, but the value is the mountaintop experience that will transform your life that will allow you to die to self. And, and this is why I understand that when the Bible says to be ready in season and out of season, you got to understand why you do what you do. Do you do it for the limelight? Do you do it to build your own kingdom? Or are you doing it truly for God's will? Come on, Pastor Frank. This is why we did the Jericho walk these past two mornings, because as men, you want to see walls fall in your life. And the only way we're going to survive, and the only way we're going to go through it, is because all of us that are married here, your wife uh, will come will come to a place that we need each other. But uh, I'll tell you one thing, I'm going to leave you with a gold nugget. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you some inspiration here as a husband. Come on. I met my wife in the streets as a drug addict. And we had the same thing in common. We were drug addicts. And when we became, when we became sober-minded and had to live with each other, we hated each other. <laughs> we had to learn how to love each other sober. Yeah, man. And when you do that, you become animalistic. And, you, and I want to let you know, how would you ever overcome that unless you have somebody in your life that you could turn to, man? We don't want to turn to another man because it's a form of weakness. But I tell you right now, if you have a strong pastor in your life that will love you, that will speak to your life and tell you the truth, uh, then look at, tell you the truth, the things that you need to hear, not the things that you want to hear. Because as men, unless you're telling us what we want, we'll say, Charlie, I'll leave it because you're not telling me what I want to hear. But if it's according to what the Word of God says, if the man of God in your life is telling you straight from what the Word of God is saying into your life and you are disobedient to that, you become an opposition against God. And this is why when I look at my pastor, I'll tell you this right now, me and my pastor, I have, I, I have always looked up to my pastor. Yes. The enemy has came against my life to try to bring a rod between me and my pastor. And this is why I can tell you this, that this is why I love my pastor. This is why I have, I have openly come and been backed up my pastor. This is why I support these things, because I understand that I am dead to myself. If you guys gonna want, if you're ever going to learn something and, you're, and walk away from this mountain, you need to learn that unconditional surrender to this is why I love the thing. The, what, what changed my life is by the way I seek my face and my God. Fasting, praying, seeking God's will, and above all, 
the lame excuses have to be put to the side. If you're going to want to survive in this, in this calling of God, if you're even going to want to make it to next week, because some of us, when you get down this mountain, your wife's going to pick an argument with you, and you're going to act like you never even came to her. Oh. And that's jacked up. Because you know what? Why waste your money? You, why waste your money? To come up to a place like this and not go back with something better than yourself. Oh, man. That will dwell inside you. And this is why, even myself, I had my services changed for whatever reason. I, I have night service tonight. And this is why, thank God, I get it this morning and I get it tonight. All right. yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm a blessed man, church. And so I don't need to repeat myself. I'm the same way in my church. I believe that we should say what God, what God laid on my heart. And what God laid on my heart is this. To have unconditional surrenderance is to put away the excuses. Your backbone will get stronger. You'll be a better disciple in your church. Yes. And you'll be a better man to your, to your wife. And at the same time, your fruitfulness. We want our children and we want our families to be saved. Well, it begins with us. You lead yourself first, then you lead others. So many people want to lead the world, and they're correct. Mm -hmm. Amen. So this, this, this morning, man, as I invite Pastor Tony to come up here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I pray that you guys pray for San Gabriel. I pray that you pray for my church. We are having a healthy growth. Yeah. I love my church. Yes. And I, I believe that God is doing a new thing in my church, and a very healthy thing. <laughs> and so, love you guys. Hope to see you next week. Yeah.